targeted, beaten and even shot. Yet the chief minister believes that the protesters were at fault, not the police that broke protocol to open fire. The political drama over the massacre escalated. The opposition has now called for a statewide bund. Mirror now asks, after ignoring the protest for 100 days, should the chief minister take responsibility for the cold-blooded murder of 13 victims? The debate begins now. You're watching the Urban Debate on Mirror now. Thank you for joining us. This is by far the most important story in the country today. Three days after his citizens were shot at by the police in the most brutal fashion, the Tamil Nadu chief minister has now surfaced. Remember, this man has not visited Tudukoran. He has not visited the people who got hurt. He has not spoken to the citizens who are upset. But he has made a statement right now blaming everybody but himself. This is his statement. Media has been covering peaceful protests. Every time the protest has taken place, they've been peaceful. But this time, some political parties planned a blow to blow this out of proportion, to tarnish the image of the government. Yes, people had themselves shot at, Mr. Chief Minister, to make you look bad. He goes on to say they attacked the police, after which the police was forced to use tear gas and a lati charge. They burned down vehicles of the district collector's office. We got to know this only after it was reported in the media. So not only is he accepting that his police overstepped, he's accepting that he had no idea and he has no grip on what's happening in his own state. There was no permission given. How convenient. And it's only natural to react in self-defense. Now I want to run that visual one more time. Of the cop who was standing on top of a truck taking aim at citizens and shooting them. And I want you to ask viewers, what part of this looks like self-defense to you? Does this individual in any way look like he's defending himself? Or does he look like a poacher who is going, see, who is actually attempting there to take aim and shoot at citizens? And that's not the worst of it. The police in the last 24 hours in Durigodin has gone on an overdrive. First of all, they completely shut down the internet in that space, which means that no videos of what was going on could be sent outside of the city. We do have one or two videos which are very interesting. Take a look at this night vision video right now of how the police was going into people's houses and dragging out young people. Anybody who was a teenager or in their 20s were being beaten and dragged by the police in this manner. Look at that young man. And this happened in, ev in almost every home. The police went in in the middle of the night and dragged people out when they were having their dinner. Our reporter Pramod, in fact, spoke to some of the people who were being carted away. Listen to what this young man of 17 had to say. Well, this is the evidence we're picking up on the ground right now. And one wonders why we shouldn't be asking for the Chief Minister's resignation, really. Joining us on the show at this point, Mr. Murli Dharan, who's an AIADMK sympathizer, CR Saraswati of the TTV, the Rakharan faction, Suman C. Raman is a political analyst, Dandraj Vanjari, former ACP Mumbai, Karuna Nandi, is a lawyer with the Supreme Court, specializes in human rights, Narayan Tripathi, spokesperson of the BJP, and Henry, of course, is an advocate and executive director of People's Watch, who has been part of this entire process. First, I'm going to go back to Pramod, our correspondent, who is in Tutigoran right now, speaking to the citizens on the ground. Pramod, what are the citizens telling you at this point? 
Well, the citizens are definitely in a lot of anger and also kind of like remorse asking like why do we have a chief minister and a deputy chief minister if they could not come to the ground and find out what was happening. The first question they are posing uh, to the chief minister, this is not the first protest they are conducting over here and chief minister also has accepted it. But on the ground they have made it very clear that there is no political color to it. In fact, so many visuals, videos have like uh, surfaced on so social media where you could not even find one party's flag. That's the main part over here. They are claiming that like no matter what party, they are not ready to accept their affiliation because they are fighting for their land, soil and water or for their like future, the children's future. And that's why they came over that day. They wanted to meet the collector. That was their perspective. That's a claim. That's a claim actually. And, the, and the, uh, as, as you saw on those visuals, right now the anger has not subsided because in the past two days, so many people have been arrested and for without any reason. As I mentioned earlier, 65 people have also been uh, released by the Tutukudi court because there was no evidence and the court has asked the cops just to release them with a warning and that is the status over here. As you saw in those videos, that was the reason today also there was unrest in Ananagar because that was a location where police had entered yesterday and they have arrested a lot of people and not just that, we also have on video how women were also beaten. Their like arms and legs are swollen and they claim they just tried to stop the cops. My child came back home from uh, work and he was eating and he was dragged out by these cops and I could not stop them. This was the words of a mother over here and that's the reason the anger is still persisting in Tutukorin. However, the collector today has given a word claiming the sterilite will be shut down as per the thought of the people and uh, in a possible manner because uh, water and electricity has been uh, uh, stopped to the plant and that has given a little bit of hope to the people of this uh, district. All right, uh, Pramod, uh, before, before you leave, of course, uh, the reaction to, by the people, from the people or to the chief minister, we also understand that several other members of opposition have been visiting the hospitals and visiting the people there. Now, are they, is, are they being welcomed by the people, members of the DMK, members of the left who have come to visit the people in hospital? Well, it seems definitely because like yesterday we had Kamal Hassan, today we had TTV Dinagaran who claimed that the chief minister is only bluffing and the chief minister should take responsibility for whatever has occurred and he should step down. Same words, or words of MK Stalin, uh, Vaiko, CPM, CPI leaders and Tirma Valavan, VCK. Every other leader claim, claims the same thing and there was no hassle. As yesterday when the collector, the former collector tried to enter the GK, I mean the general hospital, at that time there was ruckus over there and today the collector had gone there for two minutes and he left as well but he brought in and almost an entire battalion to the area and he left there was like uh, right now we couldn't see much people but any other leader except for AIDMK members if they go over there we don't see any kind of problem uh, the unfortunate thing is that uh, we haven't seen any AIDMK leader in the ground until now the chief minister is trying to hide behind the fact that once uh, section 144 has been imposed and that's the reason respecting that he doesn't want to come to Tutukuri. Well uh Thank you, Pramod, for bringing us that update. Of course, the chief minister has not visited the people in hospital, and that is the shocking part at this point. The opposition calling for the chief minister's uh, resignation has also called for a statewide bund tomorrow. We understand that shops will be closed and auto rickshaws will be off the road in uh, the state of Tamil Nadu. Let me go across right now to my guests who are standing by. CR Saraswati, is there a demand for the chief minister's resignation? And if so, why? Yeah. It's too late. He must have done last the day before yesterday itself. And what are the statements from this Tamil Nadu's chief minister? Shame to see that. Really shame to see that. A chief minister is telling, I'm not aware of it. I came to know after seeing the channels. And he's, he's, he's not telling what the things happened there. He's telling the people came and they hitted the police. So police shoot at them. What is this? People came with shotgun. People came with uh, what are all weapons. People came with knife. What they had in the hand? They were having the children in the hand. They were walking and coming towards the collector office. Police started firing them. They never did a rati chart. They never did a tear gas. They never did a water can. Straight away they shoot at the people. And you saw, you see, you see the clippings of what you have shown. A man came to see his relations. How the police are going and bringing him out and hitting him. Today our um, uh, honorable MLM said he is there and visited there. I spoke to him this evening. He said it is not 13 or 14. The death is more than 25. Injury is more than 200. The government is not showing the right numbers. And not only that, the people of Tutukurin are telling very clearly that this police is really torturing them like anything. They gone go to hospital. Not only the dead people, they can't see the they can't see the bodies also. Not only them, even the common people, they have, they're not one one father went there to admit his daughter. He went out to take some food for the daughter. The same like what you have shown in the clipping, the police hit the man and now he's in hospital. 
What is happening in Tamil Nadu? What rule is there in Tamil Nadu? Doing it more than Hitler? What Mr. Palisami is thinking? They can easily shoot anybody. They can say some reasons right. and they can get away from it. Huh? Wait, wait, now wait, what I'm second, asking is, Mr. Sarasvati, Suman C. Raman disagrees Honorable with you Prime from what I, what I can must see. Involve in this. Mr. Raman, do you disagree? I saw you shake your head. Do you disagree with what uh, yeah, yeah. C.R. Saraswati is saying? Yes, please go ahead. No, I, I think uh, we have to look at the whole thing in, in proper context. First of all, this entire incident, this tragic incident happened due to a serious intelligence failure and a bungling on the part of the state police. Clearly, uh, you know, the, the kind of uh, uh, dialogue that the chief minister himself would have ordered the shooting and all that, there does not seem to be any logic behind it. Certainly, there has been a huge intelligence failure. The police were vastly outnumbered. They had no idea of how many people were going to gather. And because they were outnumbered, and they were actually, uh, you know, they had they had uh, to take to their heels at one stage. And because of that, they used disproportionate force, which is totally condemnable. There has to be accountability. You have to find out who specifically gave the firing order. Did it come from the SP of the district? Did it come from... Normally, these orders are given at the collector level or the DRO level. Now, was it the collector or the, uh, or the revenue divisional officer who gave the order to fire? So, these things need to be investigated. The state government has appointed a, a, a retired judge to look at the uh, issue. But the point very clearly is, now is the time to try and calm the situation down. And instead, what we see is we are seeing more attempts to inflame the situation more for political gains. Look. The state, the people of the state need to be calm at this stage. We have to get justice for what has happened there for the victims of, of, of this terrible uh, incident. The police must be made to, made to be accountable. The government must be made accountable. And instead of this, we are, we are calling for a bun tomorrow. That could trigger more law and order issues. And I don't know what, what the purpose of inflaming passions more is. Political gains, yes, but this is a very, very risky game. And sincerely, one hopes that the process of getting justice to the victims should be paramount. The process of holding the government accountable, that should be but paramount. Mr. Rather Mr. than Raman. trying to score political points. And all through today, we saw the opposition trying to score political points. Right. Look, the leader of the opposition goes and is, is with the chief minister in a meeting. And he doesn't give him a memorandum. He doesn't tell him that he wants to meet him later comes out of the meeting and squats himself in front of the chief minister's room and says chief minister is refusing to meet me. I mean, this is very sad. These, but this Mr. Is Mr. Raman, Mr. Raman, when the I, I, I want to, to ask you one question. And please, hold the I government may. accountable. I, I want to ask you one question, if I may. I completely agree with what you're saying. This was a colossal failure of the police and the intelligence in the police. But the statement that has come from the chief minister today, three days too late, and the stage statement says, we only got to know of this incident after it was reported in the media. He goes on to say the police acted in self-defense. At no point is he offering any sort of commitment on an investigation, any sort of commitment that the people who were wrong would be brought to book, any sort of commitment of justice. What he's doing instead is trying to wiggle his way out of the situation. Now, I agree with you that this is a sensitive situation, but where is the sensitivity from the chief minister? Now, the first mistake, and the big mistake that the uh, government made was in not sending senior ministers immediately. I mean, the uh, if not the chief minister, deputy chief minister, senior ministers, they should have been in Tutikorin the same afternoon or evening of the incident. They should have been seen with the people trying to calm the situation down, trying to restore law and order, trying to bring but things under control. But they were at a wedding, Mr. And Raman. two and a half days, nobody from the, from, from the government no, that's what I'm saying. See, that is, those are things which are unpardonable because the, even if, you know, if they, if they had gone there, obviously they would have faced the, uh, the wrath of the, of the people at that stage. But even then, even at that risk, they have police protection. They should have been, at least the senior ministers should have gone there. No, they should but, have been you know, seen I, I to just be want with to point out, I, I just want to, to point something out the that, that the visuals that you're looking at of no, the wedding minute. on your screen. Just give me one, one second, minute. Sarah. Just give me one minute. Yes, I will come to you. The visuals you're looking at on your screen right now. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, off I the want to 23rd. thank you for that. I want to thank you for that. Yes, off the 23rd. Now, one hand, Mr. Raman says maybe they were afraid physically of going to Tutikoran because people were angry. So then, if that's the case, they should have been no, they locked should have gone, up. But they should have gone. They should have been locked up in the secretariat trying to find a solution, no, no, working with the people on the hand, not, not going to a wedding. No, no, Where is their sense of seriousness? No, no, I, I said they should have gone. Yes. I said they should have no, gone. No. So even if, 
the fact that they may have faced the wrath of the people, they should have gone. Yes, yes, absolutely. They should have gone and that should have been the first option. If they couldn't go for whatever reason, then they should have been in their offices working with those on the ground, giving them instructions, making sure that everything on the ground was working on hand. But instead, they are at a wedding. They don't even look slightly worried about their own citizens. These are the same people who are going to show up three days later and make excuses saying it was self-defense. There is no evidence whatsoever to suggest that the police were acting in self-defense. CR Saraswati, you wanted a point, you want to make a point? Please go ahead and then I'll bring in the rest of my panel. Thank you, thank no. you. Thank you, Mirror now so much. Thank you so much because even in Tamil channels, they are not shown the clippings. But I thank you, Mirror now all over the world seeing now how heartless people these people are. A girl of 17 years died, a young man of 24 years died, and so many people have died. See the chief minister and deputy chief minister and the ministers going and sitting in a marriage and enjoying it. What uh, cruel people they must be. I thank you for that, showing these clippings to all the people. I really thank you. All right, let me bring in the rest of my panel. Mr. Murli Dharan of the AIA DMK. Mr. Murli Dharan, what excuse will the chief minister have for the statement he has made today? We only got to know about this after it was reported in the media. He's obviously completely inept and unable to do his job. I said yesterday, Faye, the government should take complete responsibility. There's no two ways about it. One. Second is intelligence failure, as Mr. Suman said. Uh, that's also correct. And the third point, uh, people going to uh, uh, Tutukudi, I have a difference there because uh, even uh, Mr. Modiji, when he came last time, he didn't take the road route. He had to take the aerial route because there was a certain amount of threat. Now, I don't know. People may not accept me you know, and uh, uh, agree with me and they might try to, you know, uh, say, you know, whatever they feel like. But the fact is, there is a set of uh, fringe elements who have been uh, creating, thanks to social media, you know, creating a sort of... Uh, I mean, sort of anger, what, you know, what like sort of rage which is being developed against the uh, center. What sort of against fringe? the center and the state. Now, what we sort know of fringe what, and what is your evidence, pardon? Mr. Mulidharan? What is this fringe you're talking about, and what is your evidence? The exact, the the the, the fringe, the fringe elements. People in Tamil Nadu know who are these fringe elements. No, no, but are, I don't know. And so I'm there's asking. amount you. of radicalization in the issue. No, no, now, you're just using words now. You're saying fringe and radical. No, no, give TV. me date. If you're going to, if you want to say these Pray. things on national television, yes. and you are going to make veiled accusations and remarks, yes. then you should have proof. What is your proof? It can, it can. Yes, we have the proof. Okay, one proof I can give you what happened today at the Sri Rangam temple, where the same temple Mr. H. D. Kumar Swami took uh, before taking oath when visited, uh, a shoe was hurled at the temple idol. Now, this is a state which has been predominantly peaceful and we never had any uh, inter community problem or a communal issues. Considering all that, the the, 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 the government is holding up a lot of information which we can, they can you know, express to anybody anytime. But considering this current scenario and the peace of the state, they are holding up a lot of information. As I said, so what does that have to do? What does that have to do, Mr. Murli Dharan, and shooting your own spot. citizens and then making excuses about it? The entire protest, the entire, the entire protest took a different turn. The entire protest took How a so? different turn. There were set up people in the last protest. They were missing this time. But they had they had women in the front and they were stone pelting. So from you the shot back. them. They were stone pelting from the. So back. you the shot those women. People who gathered there, they were not only protesters. So you so, so yes, there were still human the beings, front, weren't they? they? Pushed them in the front and they were stone pelting from the. So back. you shot those women. There was a woman who yeah, was they shot. Were using I don't understand how any of the things you are saying hey, hey. make what happened any better. Where is yes. the chief minister's promise hey, of justice? It doesn't make hey, it better. Exactly the, same. exactly the reason why people are keeping quiet in Tamil Nadu. Exactly the reason why people are keeping quiet in Tamil Nadu. Because we don't want to aggravate the situation. If the ministers would have gone there, it would have become a different issue. Today, what happened? The opposition tried to, you know, they tried to interrupt the, uh, the, the convoy of the chief minister going to the, I mean, the secretariat. Then they tried to barge into his office. And there are a lot of nonsense. And they are called for another protest.
and they're going to going to go for a hartal and now asking people to shut all the shop which happened only only a few months back it happened for kaveri people are crying today after demonetization mm -hmm. dst and various issues people are bleeding to death in doing business and they Fee. still wants to shut shop because some political you know opposition Fee. does not want to shut his television media doesn't want to shut his spice jet you know he doesn't want to protest in that way but he wants to shut the poor armor shop so that the questions i asked you all right suman si raman wants That's to rebut suman si raman go ahead and then i'm there are bringing the rest of my panel suman yeah, si raman one no no just just one yeah one one very quick point fe uh, you know there was stone pelting there was setting fire to vehicles hmm. but the way the police should have handled it was to use tear gas was to use maybe a mild lathi charge and they didn't have enough numbers to make a lathi charge successful or the tear gas to work that was the reason why they started you, retreating and that was what I led to this you, extreme so, uh, so it's a completely it's a situation which has been disastrously the handled by the Mr. police Raman, no no that's exactly Raman. what i'm saying do you think you can shoot the people yeah, there mr mr raman no, no. mr raman is being with you mr raman yeah, don't talk to me shoot the people stupid lady stupid lady what are you talking mr raman calm down please calm down please what mr raman is different you can't understand What am I saying? What am I saying? All right, right. Calm down, calm okay. down, calm down, calm down, calm down. Calm down. Both of you, calm down, what calm down. There's no need for this. What is she talking? All right, all right. What is she talking? People. Both of you, calm Who's down. I, I'm going to. Don't come here and bloody do drama. All right, one second, one second, Mr. Raman, please calm down. Please calm down. I want to bring in Karuna Nandi right now. Karuna Nandi is a human rights lawyer. Not the mistake, the government did. No, no, fair ask and apologize. They have killed them. Fair ask and apologize. They have killed. Don't support them. They have killed. well uh, karuna nandi uh, there there have been human rights violations in in this particular case of the worst kind there is no situation under our law that permits the police to act in this manner at all and the thing that shocks me the most today is that the same police went into the homes of citizens and dragged them out the court has now sent 65 out of 70 of those people back home on bail saying there's no evidence against them So not only did the police violate human rights they continue to do so they they have a bit of a long history of doing this and you know somebody uh, mr murli dharan was saying that it's a largely peaceful state and there was so much peace there you know until now right but what was that peace that peace was a situation where vedanta was you know essentially the more i went into the depth of the uh, evidence of what's been going on in uh, tutukodi is you know the more i am startled at the parallels with bhopal because uh, and you know you were saying i'm a human rights lawyer and i lead the litigations um uh, for the bhopal survivors that continue till the present day because they have not received justice and the entire system is against him and it's a huge evidence of rogue corporate government nexus um i do also uh however also represent a large number of corporates where there is no such co uh, conflict of interest and so one is very familiar with the corporate structures and how it all works now the thing is that at the moment um you know first let's go and look at the the kind of peace that this gentleman was talking about and the peace is something that was causing young women to stop menstruating for example right the the there's a report by the department of health of uh, of community health of tiruvennel uh, tiruvennelli tiru uh, i'm not sure getting the word, uh, the place right tiruvennelli yes i have the report with me and um it was suppressed thank you it was suppressed because and apologies to the people of tamil nadu and it was uh, suppressed because it uh, the the findings were so deeply negative right um and so there's that there is acute respiratory infections bronchial infections is copper smelting plant there's a number over and over and over again there have been hazards that have been cited and yet they are being protected by those that are the most the highest in power we hear the chief minister has given this absolutely ridiculous statement given that his own police it's a state subject given that his own police has shot down protesters in a manner that is very very suspect for three reasons one they were shot in the chest right why were they not shot in the legs why were they shot in the chest so it seems like a shoot to kill thing a yeah, shoot to kill intention secondly they were um the leaders of the movements were killed and that is particularly suspect i think um and the third thing is that as i think many of you have pointed out that there was no ramping up of the 
uh, you know, of the the uh, yes, containment of the, action, of the crowd. The police action. So in fact, there in was fact, no, Karuna, there no water you know, cannon, uh, there forgive me no for interrupting gas, you, police, but there was action. in fact a statement, and you know, I'm, I'm reacting to what you just said about the pollution, about the way people have been affected. There was a statement put out by the person in charge of Vedanta, Mr. Anil Agarwal. Listen to this statement, viewers, in reaction to everything that happened over the last three or four days. I'm very sad to hear the incident, what happened yesterday. This was absolutely unfortunate. I have my full sympathy with the family. The plant is closed because of annual shutdown. And we are waiting for clearance from the court and the government to restart the plant. And we are strictly following what court and the government orders are. We always make sure the community and the Tutikorean people at large prosper with us. I am totally committed for the community, people at large, and with their wish and with their prosperity, we would like to continue this business. Once again, I assure you, I am fully committed to the environment and the development of people of Tutikorean and the Tamil Nadu, and will abide by the law of the land. Well, that was Anil Agarwal. Um, Karunanandi, he is committed to the people lovely of words, Faye, but the Lovely words, but unfortunately, Lovely words, but unfortunately, look at the past history of Vedanta. If you look at the history of this copper smelting plant itself, it has violated, you know, it was given um, permission by the environmental ministry to operate without environmental impact assessment, firstly. Secondly, they were given a certain quota within which they had to, they had to produce a certain amount. And they went way above that. Thirdly, repeatedly they have violated norms that would protect the local population from essentially what is, you know, toxic poison, right? And, um, and th there are sort of poorer people then who are losing healthy lives and have lost healthy lives, which is why the protests happened in the first place. Now, if you see, if the protests are silenced by people shooting them down, the prime minister is silent and the chief minister is, you know, not sort of looking to bring any justice. Why is the prime minister silent? If you look at the highest one of the, the Vedanta is one of the highest donors uh, of the Bharatiya Janata Party. It has also donated to the Congress. Recently, the Bharatiya Janata Party brought into Parliament a, uh, a, a bill and uh, then passed it into law saying that all the previous violations of the of donations by foreign companies would be condoned and would be basically wiped away. So, and plus, they have not reported, you know, despite a CIC order saying, tell us who your donors are, the larger part, the BJP has not responded. The Delhi High Court, in fact, found that there was a violation by the uh, by the BJP and the Congress Party, but not by the Ahmadmi Party. Um, so, so actually, uh, let me let me bring regard, you a response on that, Narayan Tirupati. Well, one second, so, Karuna. You know, Narayan Tirupati. Let, let me break this down and get your responses. Narayan Tirupati represents the BJP. Mr. Tirupati, would you deny that uh, the Vedanta, which owns Sterlite Copper, the company for which police is shooting citizens today? is a major donor to your political party. See, is Perhaps that the, uh, one of the, most major the subject of discussion here? It is not so. Oh, it is not so. I think uh, they are trying to divert Amongst the entire the issue. Other Who no. issued the licenses? The DMK, the Congress, and also the AADMK. Whom you, we are going by law. What is your problem? See, in 2009, this uh, part two, the, the extension was given license by the then Congress government, 1-1-2009. Mr. P. Chidambaram, I think uh, uh, my friend, you know, who spoke, correct. she forgot to say something. Or, I don't correct. know whether she's afraid or what. I don't know. Mr. P. Chidambaram was the, she, Mr. P. Chidambaram was one of the directors in uh, Vedanta Group. I think safely she forgot about all those things. He, she is favored, is he is favored Vedanta when he was in office. And that is also there. So yeah. she, for, she safely forgot everything. See, the problem is this. In this issue is concerned, the Madurai bench, Mr. Ramesh, I'll respond Justice, when he's Mr. done. Mr. Ramesh, on 18th, had very clearly said, yeah, yeah, no problem, you respond. I will also definitely answer you. 
on 18th of this month, the Honorable Justice Mr. Ramesh of the Madurai bench had very clearly stated that this protest, which is likely to trigger law and order problem at Tutukurin, it has to be, you know, taken care of. And the government, he has issued directions, he has issued orders to the uh, collector and also the superintendent of police. There is a complete intelligence failure. See, what all she said, what all we have been discussing, the Supreme Court has cleared this case and it has fined 100 okay, crores. So, Mr. Narayan Tirupati, Mr. Narayan Tirupati, why is the central government too? completely finish, silent on finish, this case? Let me finish. Why is the central government completely silent on this case? How can you say, have you, I, have you not heard what the Home Minister said today? I think you should have definitely relayed in your television. I saw in some other channel. I don't hmm. know whether you relayed it or not. What did, did he you say? Or not? Mr. The, Mr. Rajnath Singh was very clear in his set. Uh, Mr. Rajnath Singh said that we have asked for a report from the state government hmm. and we are with the uh, people of uh, Tutukarin and he has asked for uh, to maintain calm and the, the central government has definitely done his duty. How can you say that uh, we have not responded? We have done our, it was our only our minister, Mr. Pundrada, the only person who fought for this issue and he staged, he, he held uh, Dharna and also uh, death, fast until death in 99 mm. to mm. shut this, to make this particular unit not to come. But it was Congress, DMK and after that it was AADMK, which created so many panic and so, it so violated do you, do you agree Mr. So Narayan that the current it chief minister Zaylanta must be asked to resign because yeah. of the failure in this particular case see yes I, I will come to that see what happened uh, day for yesterday in spite of the warnings given by orders given by the honorable high court the police filed the intelligence filed definitely we have to accept that but what has happened we have uh, you just see Every Should time, the chief minister uh, resign, yes or no? In Tamil Nadu, the Hindu, let me finish. Let me know. I cannot answer in one word, yes or no. Uh, this is not court martial. It has very clearly said that the, the protesters, there were infiltrators in the protest and the police and the public were attacked. And if at all there is any violation, whoever is guilty, whether it is the uh, superintendent of Who police these or the collector or even the chief minister, the guilty should be booked. Who they were these become, infiltrators? They should be booked. There is no doubt at all. But it has to be proved. It, who it who are these proved. infiltrators? No Mr. 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 Therubadi, who are these the infiltrators? Case. Yeah. That, that's what all the dailies have said. People that's what the reports that. have said. You can very easily, you go and read the judgment of Honorable uh, uh, Justice Mr. Ramesh. He has very clearly said the Makkal Adhigaram pamphlet, which has been given, that definitely speaks that these protests will not be peaceful. That is what he has said in his judgment. You please go. Nobody is No, no, you said, that. you said that, that there are infiltrators and these are not citizens of Tutikoran. Who are the infiltrators? Where have they come from? Do we know anything? See, what, Do you have any proof of said. infiltration? You read the judgment. You please. So when you say, well, I'm, I'm asking you, you, you've made the accusation here. When you say infiltrators, are you talking about people from outside the yes. state, outside the country? Quoted, Where are they infiltrating from? I, 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 I quoted, I quoted the yeah. judgment. You please try to understand. In the judgment, the judge says that the pamphlets issued by... Does Michael the judge Adhikara, say that infiltrators yeah, 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 will be, come yeah, and yeah, so police should shoot them? Is that what the judge is saying? Infiltrators will come what and police should shoot them? I told you all the dailies have reported. So, so you, you are just to, making conjecture at this point. Let me go. Reports, this is uh, the the Henry, 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 Henry Thipane is an advocate India, and an executive you go director. Times of India, Henry, you go to Times of India, I you work go to in Hindu, Times of India. What are you talking about? There is no mention of any sort of infiltration. You are bringing it up now. Henry has just been released by the police in Tutukorin. Henry, what is going on there? There are accusations right now that the group was... If I may just very quickly respond to him, Phil. Yes, okay. Karuna, please go ahead. Very briefly. Now, he's absolutely right. The BJP representative is absolutely right that the Congress has involvement here and the, the Mr. Chindambaram was director. Plus, it was under the Congress regime that they were given certain permissions. At the same time, at least Rahul Gandhi very much opposed what was going on in Niamgiri in Odisha with Vedanta, firstly. Secondly, um, what was the BJP doing during the last four years? You have many powers under the Environmental Protection Act that could have come... Absolutely. 
to the rescue of justice and could have come to the rescue of people, which you failed to exercise. So let us be quite clear here that your funding, sir, is I actually like quite centrally relevant to what is going on here. And the third thing, the third point I want to I add here to is that the, the internet shutdown has happened, and you know people have fired on people and. Essentially, it's a private army and an internet shutdown in response to a corporate protest against a corporation. Let us keep this in mind. Henry? See, the in February 13, 2018. See, February 13. Right, Let me finish. One, one Let second, me. one second. In I want to bring in. 13, I want, I, this is, this, I this want to be able to hear normal. Henry, please. Henry, was there infiltration no, into I, the I crowd? Answer. And did I, the police go around picking will, up people? Will, one second, I heard I will, you out. I, I want to hear Henry now. One second, one second. Henry, please go ahead. Mr. Raghavan wants to answer everything. He might finish all his answers and then we will come into the scene, Mr. Raghavan, if you want. Can I speak? Yes, go ahead, Henry. Mr. Raghavan, can I speak? Yeah. Now, number one, I was not arrested in Judith um, okay. I don't have the privilege of being arrested in Judith I was arrested in Chennai today in a protest that we were engaged in. Can you hear? Yes, go ahead. Can you hear? Yes, yes, we can me? hear you. Okay. Go ahead, please. Now, now the question of uh, Justice Ramesh's order being cited here, I think it needs to be further clarified. This was on a petition filed by not the government. This was a petition filed by Sterlite themselves, Vedanta themselves, number one. Number two, it is very surprising that the government of Tamil Nadu, the district superintendent of police, the IG South, the district director, require Justice Ramesh to remind them of how to maintain law and order. And I think they have to take their classes from the judiciary. They don't know what they have to do in governance. And third, after imposing a 144 in Jutipur, it is very interesting that the Tamil Nadu government has bureaucrats as district collectors who locate their district headquarters and sit far away from the headquarters while the 144 is there and while a large gathering of people is taking place. This is total failure. We now know that the collector and the SP have been transferred. Command and responsibility principle of human rights demands that they should be charged under law. You cannot hold ordinary constables responsible for the mayhem that is taking place. You have to hold the top police officials responsible. And unless that is done, accountability will never come. Impunity will continue. This is something I think from a human rights perspective, we need to understand. And it can't go to the Number CBI. Two, Absolutely the right. Let me finish. Let me finish. It can't go the to the CBI. There should be an SIT. After, one minute. Let me just finish. Yes, please do. Uh, after the 22nd firing, we see the city has been taken over by five, four IGs. Very good. If this is to build confidence among people, that would be very good. We are not anti-police, but what has happened is the police have cut down internet in three districts. So your television channels from there cannot bring out news. You cannot send emails from there. Victims cannot be met by the media, but victims are being threatened house to house, beaten on the street. Said, this is atrocious in terms of human rights. Mr. Raghavan, Mr. Murugan, if it happened to your families, please react how you would like to react. This is happening in Tripuri. I'm not bothered about whether it is ADMK. I'm not bothered about who is in government. I'm not bothered about the government. I'm bothered about governance. And there is just no governance there. And what is happening is that they are ensuring that people who are going to speak are stuck. Don't open your mouth, because if you open your mouth, this is what is going to happen to you. I'm very ashamed at the state of affairs in the state. And I want to appreciate your channel for coming out and the many other channels which are giving this a national perspective. It is no longer sterilite, get out. It is no longer Vedanta closed down in Tutukarin. It is sterilite, get out, closed down. Vedanta, get out of India. We want a development which protects our environment. We are not against development, but we want a development that will protect our environment. Henry, I just have one question for you. Is the police behaving like they are there to protect the people, or are they behaving like they are there to protect Sterlite? I, 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 at the moment, I don't even want to use the word Sterlite and move the discourse away. The police are there to protect themselves, 
They are pulling out people from houses. They are not supposed to do that. They are keeping people in illegal detentions. There has been a magistrate who has undertaken a search warrant and found over 150 people kept in illegal detention. They have been released on bail. What is happening? There are a number of allegations of hundreds of people who are kept in illegal detention. There are also allegations, and I tell you these are allegations, that there are more deaths. I think if real... Right, right. Okay, uh, we're going to try and fix that audio. We have some audio problems there. Mr. Dhanraj Banjari, former ACP Mumbai. Mr. Banjari, we had a conversation two days ago about the information that was coming in from Tutikorin, after which we have seen these visuals of police people shooting at citizens in plain clothes from the top of a truck, which we had talked about uh, over 48 hours ago. But my real problem here today is with the statement of the chief minister, who first of all makes excuses and calls this self-defense. And he then goes on to say that the police, there was no, you know, this was natural. The police are obviously going to act in this manner. No promise of an investigation, no promise of justice, no promise of protection to the citizens. Yes, it's very state of horrible things. Let me tell you in two minutes time that uh, in the state police manual, the law is very clear that except the police firing of training practice and their uh, training uh, issues, every firing, one round also being fired by police is a sumoto subject of judicial inquiry. Not review of any higher ups or by government, but it's a subject of judicial inquiry. Now in this case, let police explain that what was the constraint. They went on the rooftop of the vehicle and aimed through automatic firearm like AK-47. Let police explain what was their figure of preventive arrest before four days. Let police explain what was their intelligence and let also them to explain that what is the state of affair of their community policing. And after this, if inquiry, judicial inquiry, I mean, comes out with the result, then only person like CM has a moral right to speak and defend his police. Now it is so lame on his part that he is saying that police has no other option but in self-defense they have to do this but that also must have a logical reasoning. I do not find any logical reason in the contention of CM and what he is doing is trying in a lame manner a mockery of law and order situation. In spite of that he should have said that let there be concrete inquiry and whosoever would be a earring cop either giving orders wrongfully or either the constable facing threat to his life and he has to resort for firing in self-defense, whatever it may be, let the inquiry report come, that will clear the picture. But before that, if CM is speaking like that, Fay, let me tell you, he is nothing, doing nothing but admitting his collective sustained guilt in the public and that should go on the record that in a lame fashion he is trying to defend the police. Now today, what police are doing, they are just creating fur in the area, going house to house, door to door and dragging the youth inorbitantly in their drag net in the, and arresting them and making previous arrest. What stops police not go like this before four days? Had they been gone, this situation would not have arise. All those questions are not only of centering responsibility by police, they have to take it. It will be a criminal liability of police, let me tell you very frankly. Though I am a cop, I know the manual and rules and regulation very well. Correct. What? How can police fire above the waistline and kill yes, the person yes, yes. by firing Mr. Murli Dharan, in his Mr. Murli Dharan, here's my it's question to you. You have and been, you've been case, telling us very, very patiently for the last three days that obviously there will be an investigation and we will find out who was responsible and that person should be punished. No such promise came from the chief minister. Now, if the chief minister is yes. not going to give us an investigation, how do we know that this investigation is going to be a serious one? He obviously seems to think that what the police did was right and it was fully justified. So either he's lying to us or he's trying to get, out of, get himself out of arm's way. Which one is it? I think we need to wait for the commission inquiry. Uh, but pay. what commission? He's uh, not talking about it. Now, he I seems said, to think the police is already to. not guilty. Absolutely not. There are.
when 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 the state is in such turmoil, you, you by doing all this, we'll only add to the fuel. By doing we all what? We will only fuel the fire. So we need to wait, and one day, no, one day, everybody is going to be thankful that the state was, you know, kept away from the actual secrets. You know, we know what's happening in Tamil Nadu. You know, we know some people are trying to destabilize Tamil Nadu, take it away, and separate it from India. And that's that's not a great thing. That's not a great thing. But I can't name them. But everybody in Tamil Nadu know who all these people are. And let's let's wait for the facts to come out. Let the commission inquiry come out. After a few days, you will know yourself. And you'll be so, thanking the chief minister for keeping quiet. I seriously doubt That's that, I that I'm you. going to be thanking I'm the chief minister. For, so you were, you're telling me, you and your colleagues... One minute, one minute. 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 You are saying one second. Let me just let me let me let me let me see if I've understood you correctly, Mr. Murli Daran. One second, one second, one second. You are saying there are people who have infiltrated Tamil Nadu. I'm assuming infiltration can only happen from outside the country. So foreigners are in Tamil Nadu right now, and they're trying to break. Not external force. Not an external force. Not an external. Not external force. These are people with foreign funding. These are people with foreign funding. These are people with foreign funding. People with foreign funding. They do not belong to any community. They do not belong to any community. What is they their motive? are people with foreign funding. There Please are people with funding. Please one minute, ma'am. Please one minute. No, no, let him finish. There this are, this is interesting. People with, foreign funding. people with foreign funding have are trying to break away Tamil Nadu from yeah, the rest of the country. There are people with foreign funding. This is this is this is this is nothing communal or anything as you fear okay. This is nothing That's to do to uh, with that. But I can tell you there are elements. Is there any evidence or just diverting the main issue of argument? So this you will come to know slowly. I will come to know soon. So, so why should okay. I divert the main issue, sir? So people with foreign funding in Tamil Nadu so are trying to break that, Tamil Nadu okay. away from the rest why of the country, and this protest is about that. All right. Now we'll get rebuttals. Karuna Nandi first, and then C R Saraswati. Karuna Nandi. Vague allegations of foreign funding, Mr. Muriel Dharan, versus the foreign funding that Vedanta has been, you know, throwing around very liberally to our political parties. Mm -hmm. And I would like to know who the AIADMK has been receiving funds for, from, and what are the for what are the foreign companies that you have been you have been receiving from, or your party has been re receiving funds from? I would like to know that. Um, you know, there are many people listening to this broadcast. Let us hear that. Secondly. The bogey of national security is frequently raised to go against our citizens and very vague allegations where there's no national security problem except for the profit making of particular companies or the staying in power of particular individuals. So let us not raise the bogey of national security when a number of people have been shot down with assault rifles in their chest, the leaders of these movements and Sorry, a commission of inquiry set up your government, by your government is neither here nor there. A judicial inquiry, as a former police person where quite, you know, very specifically and quite rightly said is what's required. And nothing less than a judicial inquiry that establishes up the chain of command exactly who was responsible. And if it goes up to the chief minister or if it goes up to Delhi and the central government, then let it do so. Let's be clear on that. C.R. Saraswati. Who are these people who are trying to break away Tamil Nadu? Why do? Can I give you? Can, 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 can I give you Mr. a bigger Murali context Daran, for Mr. this? Murali Why don't Daran, you ask this first question? First, let me so tell you something. Let Kashmir. me. Let me. Hello. No, no. Let's see our Saraswati speak, and then you yeah, can please. respond to both of them. Hello. Please. Yeah, go ahead. Ms. Go Saraswati, ahead, go, go ahead, ahead yeah. please. Mr. Murali Daran, I want to convey you something. The Tam not only Tamil Nadu Tamilians all over the yeah. world, the Tamilians will be happy. This minority of Pace and Nepes get down immediately. They must get down immediately. They must go out from the power. Daily Tamil will be very Tamilians will be very thankful. Such a so greatless people, not even power. a condolence to the people so who died there going for power. a function. Another thing I'm telling you, very clearly now we saw it. Let me finish it. Very clearly we so saw Jinnama Mr. Anil Agarwal's statement now. They are not so closed. Jinnama Every day you are telling no, they are closed. They are closed. He Jinnama, said very clearly Jinnama it is shut down for maintenance. The they are not closed. No, one second. What Let, you why do you insist on speaking over the government? You are showing the keepings every day. It's going to, it's closed. Okay, all right. The chairman said very clearly. This is the answer. You're not going to make any headway in this. One, one, one second, one, one second, sir. Asuthi, I... I'm telling you, ask your government to go away. Ask your government to go away. 
You are getting in political mind. All right, all right, stop. Both of you, both of you, um, if, do we have Henry's audio now? Can Henry hear us? All right. Uh, I, I want to be able to hear Henry. Can, I, I, He's a nominated chief minister. Okay. He has okay. not selected by the people. Remember all right, that. All right, all right, all right. Let me, all right, all right. Saraswati, Saraswati. Henry, can you, I want you to react to this allegation that there is infiltration. One second, one second. Calm down. I hate, to have, I hate to have to do that. Henry, I want you to react to this allegation that there are people who have infiltrated the group and they are trying to break away Tamil Nadu and they have foreign funding. Is any of this true in your opinion because you were among the protesters this entire time? Well, let me make it very clear. I, I was there in Jutukorin to monitor the protest. Yes. I want to make that extremely clear. Number two, I want to also make it very clear that in all crisis situations, whichever government is in power, whether it is Congress or whether it is DMK, whether it is ADMK, whether it is BJP, the body of foreign funds is always there. And I want to tell you that I stand before you as a proud member of civil society who has his bank account closed for 1,250 days, started with the Congress government, continuing with the present government. I had got my orders from the Delhi High Court to open my bank account and once again the present government had closed it. And the reason they gave in court was that we communicate with the United Nations Special Rapporteurs. This is said on oath. This is said by the Ministry of Home Affairs on an affidavit. And further, they state that we communicate with the embassies. Now, I am a human rights activist, and my job is to communicate with commissions, national, state level, communicate with the United Nations, because I believe my country is part of the UN Charter. I believe my country wants a seat in the UN Security Council. I would like to come in here. Sorry, you can come in, please wait. And therefore, this allegation that you make about foreign funds, please. It is the same allegation against you. And you have the audacity to use the finance bill to extricate all political parties from the foreign funds that you get from your corporates. We are... Hello, uh, Narayan Thrupati. Uh, Narayan Thirupati to, under, to uh, rebut that before we close the show, Mr. Henry. Narayan, Narayan Thirupati of the BJP, you wanted to respond? Please go ahead. I think, I, yeah. Well, the, the other uh, co-panelist, uh, when she was saying that what this BJP has done in the last three years, BJP on February 13th, very clearly, it has halted this Four. particular phase two. And all the sanctions and other things were given by the then Congress and DMK, AADMK governments, not BJP. But there are some forces which are trying to... Mm. Induct BJP into this issue mm. when BJP is not at all, you know, involved in all these things. And we have we have stopped everything. We have consent to these Tutukurin people. And uh, uh, Mr. Henry Tiffin, Henry was saying so many things. See, why the government should stop when he is, he is thankful or he is happy that Delhi High Court has released the funds. He should obey. He is happy that the Delhi High Court has said. When Delhi High Court is in favor of something for him, he should definitely obey and he should uh, thank the other uh, court's orders also. That is why I referred the uh, Madhuri bench. It has very clearly said. Why should Madhuri bench say? Then he has to accept that as per the Madhuri bench, the they bench said that okay. the, there were some okay. forces which are trying to disturb the protest. That is what the Madhuri court said. So when uh, something good for uh, Henry happens, he will accept it. Something okay. not right. in favor right. of we're it. Going to, we're, going to, we're going to we're going to have to wrap this up this right now, Mr. Tirupati. Mr. Tirupati, but we we'll leave it to a point where we know and everybody on the panel agrees unanimously that the police completely overstepped. That they had no business, no business whatsoever, attacking their own citizens in that manner, shooting at their own citizens in that manner. They committed a massive, massive mistake, and what they're doing now is even worse because this is not in panic, this is not in a situation of fear, this is pure cover-up, what you're looking at on your screen, the police going into people's homes, picking up anyone in the age group of 17 to 30, beating them and, and rounding them off. Thankfully, the courts have released 65 out of 70 of those people saying there's no evidence against them.
Where are the police officers who shot at the students, uh, who shot at the uh, citizens? Why haven't they been rounded up? Why haven't they been arrested? How is a transfer good enough? They should have been suspended from office and they should have been arrested immediately if the state at, was serious at all about its investigation. And to make matters worse for us, the ministers who attended a wedding, instead of worrying about what was actually happening in their state, and the chief minister who turns around now and says they was, they, whatever the police did was obviously in self-defense and was completely okay, gives us no confidence whatsoever that the state is serious. There have been various stories that are floating about, about groups coming in from outside, about infiltrators coming in, about foreign funding coming in. The truth is, whether somebody came in from outside, whether they infiltrated and whether that person has a foreign bank account, nothing gives you the right to shoot at another human being. Nothing, especially as a police officer. You cannot do this with impunity. It's completely unacceptable. So none of these arguments make any sense. Who cares where the other person had come from? A different state, a different part of the country. Does that give you the right to shoot them? If they're receiving funding from overseas, does that give you the right to shoot them? What part of the constitution of the IPC does it say that if you suspect somebody came from outside to and please shoot them? Something went horribly, horribly wrong in Tamil Nadu. And it seems obvious that the chief minister wants to step as far away from it as possible and he wants to guard those police officers who know who gave the order. The citizens of India demand and have a right to know who gave the order. And that person belongs in jail. One hopes the central government will step in at this point and order a judicial inquiry that is not in any way controlled or influenced by the state government, but the state government certainly has something to hide. We're going to keep a close eye on this because the people of Tutukuri right now deserve our attention and our time. It is the least we can do for them. Thanks for watching.